the Nebraska Wesleyan University Sports Network in conjunction with Five City TV and the Great Plains Athletic Conference present Prairie Wolves basketball. Today it's an NAIA conference matchup featuring the Bulldogs of Concordia University and the Nebraska Wesleyan University Prairie Wolves. This game is made possible by Lincoln Electric System. It's your electricity, own it. And Nebraska Wesleyan University. Now let's take you out to Snyder Arena. Good evening and welcome to Snyder Arena here at Nebraska Wesleyan for tonight's GPAC matchup as the Concordia Bulldogs take on the Nebraska Wesleyan Prairie Wolves. I'm Lucas Mormon along with Jeff Motes and tonight it's one of the GPAC's best ninth ranked Concordia against the Nebraska Wesleyan team that has been struggling all season long. All season long they had one win this season that was the opening game of the season since then it's been 18 straight losses overall they're 0-14 in GPAC play coming into tonight in fact you go back to January of 2012 Lucas they have been 1-46 overall in conference play. Their last conference win goes back to January of 2013 where they went down and beat Crete or beat Doan in Crete. That's the last win that they've had, and they're still searching for that first win in conference play tonight. And it's not going to be easy against Concordia. They haven't beat them here in Lincoln since 2000, so it's been a while against a tough Concordia squad tonight, ranked ninth in the nation. First-year head coach for Wesleyan, It'll be a challenge. GPAC basketball coming up right here on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Hi, this is Ryan with LES's Save Money Saving Energy. Did you know that proper insulation levels can help reduce your heating and cooling costs? You can check your attic insulation level with this very advanced high-tech tool called a ruler. Make sure you have 14 to 16 inches of insulation for maximum energy efficiency. It'll help reduce drafts and allow your heating and cooling systems to not have to work so hard. Think of it as saving money by the inches, you know, $1, $2, $3, you get the idea. For more ways to save, visit les.com today. See you next time. Dr. R. E. Cycle here with a simple but important message. Recycling starts at home. That's right, it's up to you to take the first step. Setting up a home recycling system is easy and you don't need much space. Find out how at recycle.lincoln.ne.gov. Recycling is good for our community and our planet, and you don't need to be a genius like me to get started. So do the right thing, the recycle thing. Welcome back to Snyder Arena. Tip off, Mueller will jump circle with Diaz for the Bulldogs controlling the tip as Pites in the backcourt. GPAC intra state battle here. The Bulldogs from just down the road in Seward. Morris with it high. Swings it right side to the freshman. Heiser puts it on the floor. In the lane, Mueller has it blocked, but then lost out of bounds. That's good defense at time by Diaz. And again, Nebraska Wesleyan starting out in a zone defense. Trying to make Concordia maybe try to shoot from outside. Heiser keys it into the lane. Pites goes up, another block. So two early blocks for Nebraska Wesleyan. Morris on the dribble, kicks it out. One to shoot, just getting it off was Quinn. No score here, 35 seconds in. Good stop defensively for Wesleyan here on this very first possession for Concordia. Let's see what they can do here in the offensive end. Looks like Concordia going to a man defense. A well, matchup there, Diaz with it. Nebraska Wesleyan shuffled their starting lineup a little bit tonight. We'll run down the starters here shortly. Shot clock winding down and a travel. So a turnover, and that's been an Achilles heel of these Prairie Wolves all year, the turnovers, as now they apply token backcourt pressure. Bulldogs started with Morris, Pites, Kelsey Heiser, Shelby Quinn, Becky Mueller, two juniors, three juniors, and a couple freshmen. Lob all the way over the top. Heiser from long range. Off the back iron, no. Offensive rebound, up and in. First points of the game to Becky Mueller, the freshman from Omaha Concordia. Quickly the other way, Nebraska Wesley, and they got to save it in. Quinn comes away with the turnover. Keep an eye on Concordia here in transition. They can run two. Third block of the night, though. But the offensive rebound for Quinn again. Quinn's cracked that starting lineup after some injuries have been has taken their toll on this Bulldog squad. Much different looking team than they were at the beginning of the season. 
Heiser skips it across to Quinn. She'll jack up the three off back iron. Heiser, another second chance opportunity, no good. Rebound controlled that time for Ashley. Leslie in that time got lucky because Diaz did not block out on that rebound. Could have been another second chance opportunity there for Concordia. But again, Wesleyan, they got to get up early here if they can. There you see Drew Olson, eighth year as the head coach at Concordia. He's got basketball in his bloodlines. There's another offensive rebound by Wesleyan this time. Morris, after the second chance, comes away with it. She's the floor general for these Bulldogs. Pites crosses over to the rack. Little runner, no good, but a foul. Two free throws coming up for Tracy Pites, the second leading scorer on this Bulldog squad. And that's the other thing that Nebraska oh, Weston is going to try to score. There you see on the replay, they got to try to stop the dribble drive to the basket. You don't necessarily want to force them over the middle right down the lane. That's another opportunity, but try to force them straight down to the baseline. Third point, three nothing. Bulldogs here. Pites with the second chance. That one's good as well. 61% free throw shooter on the year. Now the Bulldogs with their full court pressure. They like to create turnovers. They like to force the tempo on you. They're trying to get up early here and try to get up as quick as they can. Now they utilize that press. They get the 10 second count in the backcourt. That's something that as a college women's side of things, there used to be no 10 second court count. First year it's back in effect here. So a lot of teams, you know, you come, high school you're doing it, now you don't, now you're back to in college uniform, 10 second count on all these. There's a nice dime. Quinn finds Pites on the right side. Gets that dribble penetration. There's the press working that time. Again, Pites just very tough in that backcourt. And that time, Nebraska Wesleyan draws the foul as Tecolste tried to bring up the sideline, and they were right at another 10-second oh, count. And now as Wesleyan going to the bench, we see Bridget Booker, who came over here, of course, to play volleyball here at Wesleyan, also to join the basketball team after the season was over with. And then we see Courtney Cook, and there's a couple of players in this Wesleyan team that have got family connections to this athletic program. It's a nice pass across the lane, up and in, first bucket. Cook. Mueller, the freshman into the lane, cut off there, kicks it out. Pites from deep right side, nothing but nylon. Tracy Pites has seven of the Bulldogs' nine points here in the early going. Going inside and outside, that's how you move the ball so well on offense. Good job there by Pites on that knocking down that three, and now pressure in midcourt. And again, that's going to be the issue tonight for Nebraska Wrestling. How can they match up against that full court pressure? The way that Concordia executes that is just phenomenal. And, that, and that's one reason why they come in 20 and five, 12 and three in the conference, ranked ninth in the country. They're just that good defensively. And it all, a lot of it stems from that pressure, those steals and easy buckets. Now we got almost a line change for Concordia. There's a turnover. That's Devin Edwards, another Lincoln, Nebraska product, Lincoln Northeast. Played to high school basketball for Steve Bartek. Devin Edwards in her freshman season. Man-to-man -man pressure, Concordia again, leading by seven. Almost four minutes gone by, quick moving first half. There's a dribble drive down the lane, cutting off the defensive pressure that time. Three-pointer up. Uh, Sanchez too hard. Foul is going to be called. It goes against the Prairie Wolves. So the ball's back to Nebraska, or Concordia at the 15-55 mark. Felicia to Colsey that time. What she was trying to do, she was blocked out. She was just trying to tip that thing back out to the perimeter and try to reset the offense. But a little bit too much aggression that time. From the outside, there's the fourth block of the night for Wesleyan. So defensively around the rim, they've been solid. It's been the turnovers and the transition points, the inside out game that's hurt so far. There's a kick out for Laboda. She buries it from about 17. Inside outside, if they do, if they can't get the shot inside, they'll go to the outside. They're just as lethal. Wesleyan breaks the pressure with a pass this time, and then a foul. 
Bridget Booker underneath, drawing the foul. Probably got away with a little bit of a walk there, as you see here on the replay, but did a good job of using the shot fake and using that contact going back up to the basket. He throws up it in. And if you can beat that press with a pass, Jeff, like they did that time, they had some numbers and they're making most of the opportunity. Both free throws good, that one rattles home. Two for Booker. And Wesleyan still setting up in his own defense as they go to a 2-3. There's a stepping into the passing lane, taking it away. Chance for transition, but Concordia back on defense, a kick out, long three left side, nothing. And hustle play there, does it stay with the uh, Prairie Wolves? Nope, they'll say the last to touch it that time was Courtney Cook, the six foot sophomore. First year coach Brittany Fed over there on the sidelines again. This is kind of a learning experience. You got a new system, new group of players, trying to get in sync with everything, trying to execute. So far, been a long season for them. Good defense that time by Courtney Cook. Edwards had the three point attempt blocked that time. As here comes five fresh Bulldogs at the next dead ball. On the dribble, Diaz, right side now. It's that man pressure, they find a hole in it. Nice top to bottom pass there. Another bucket for Courtney Cook. She averages 12.2 on the season. Sanchez with a great look from the top of the key. Normally that could be a dangerous pass, but a good look because Cook was wide open underneath. Taylor Wissing was off on the three. Nebraska Wesley in the other way. Now Wesley trying to pick up some momentum here, but unfortunately throwing the ball away, that might skew things just a tad as we see a whole line change coming in here for Concordia. Yeah, basically the starters checking back in for Concordia here, leading 11 to six. Almost six minutes in here from Snyder Arena. GPAC action. GPAC a tough conference top to bottom on the women's side, especially in basketball. Mueller to Heiser. Heiser to Quinn. Pites really working hard down low. Can't get it to her. Heiser on the dribble, 15 to shoot. Now Becky Mueller has it blocked again. That's the, number five tonight, Lucas. The block party here for the Prairie Wolves early and, on. And Diaz is at most of them. You know, you, you look at this team all together. They're very young. But, you know, they're competing, and that's a good sign. Pites had it poked away. Quinn was the last to touch it. According to the stripes, and Wesleyan with a chance here, only down five, 13.55. I mean, you start three freshmen, yeah. what's that tell you? You know, that, that's a sign that there, you've got some talent and you can build on that here in the next couple of years. All underclassmen, as there's a timeout, Coach Fett takes it, we'll step away. Wesleyan trails it by five, 11.6, early on Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Oh man, Joey. 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 Thank goodness you had a license on him because I was able to find out where he lived and bring him home to you safely. Oh, Joey. Out of the timeout, Nebraska Wesleyan trails 11 to six to the Concordia Bulldogs from down the road in Seward, Nebraska. After the turnover, it's back to the Prairie Wolves. Morris gets a hand on it, it'll stay with Nebraska Wesleyan. I mentioned the injuries earlier, Jeff, and Morris in the starting lineup, fourth leading scorer in the GPAC, but she was a bench player before some of these injuries happened. It's Bench player is a relative term in Coach Olson's offense. So. Right, and you know, Drew Olson's got a good abundance of talent out of Concordia, and he's not worried about trying to reload somebody that's out on the floor. It's normally a starter. Jumper from 15 on the baseline. Offensive put back off glass, up and in. Courtney oh. Cook. Six points so far. White saw a hole in that defense, went down the left side, off glass and in. And again, it's stuff like that that's going to be the demise of Nebraska Wesley. You've got to stop the drive any way you can, especially from the wing. There's that turnover out of the press, ahead to Morris. Right side layups up and in. And 
this is when Kikori will get you. All of a sudden, you're right in the game, you look up, and they've gone on a little 6-0, 7-0 run on. Close call that time as Wesleyan's able to get the ball back. Solsky. Trapped there. Heiser poked it away. Mueller came out of there with it. She wants to push the issue ahead to Quinn. Inside Pites. Cracks it down. A foul is going to be called. A little push. Trying to get to it that time was Courtney Cook. But, you know, that, that's not a bad foul because she was playing oh, very good defense, but they were going after the basketball, and there was a little bit of contact. Take a look at this again yeah, on the replay. There you see at her forearm, her right forearm on her back. You said, Jeff, though, good entry defense there. Poked it away from Pites. They tried to go inside to Pites, who's become more of a, a post factor, usually playing on the wing, but again, forced down into that post position with an uh, injury to Jerrica Pearson, one of the many knees that have hampered the Concordia. There's a little baby hook in the lane, no good. Shelby Quinn with the offensive rebound. Morris into the lane. Little floater up and in. Bailey Morris, first points of the night. And two points to number 12. That was a good Morris. take to the basket from Bailey Morris. And it's stuff like that that you gotta try to stop. You to try to let them go baseline, but if they drive to the wing, you gotta get there and stop them before they get any further close to the lane. Look at Booker down inside. Puts up a left-handed scoop shot, hard off the glass. Concordia the other way. Heiser on the wing. Quinn, the freshman, over to Pites. Puts it on the dribble. Into the lane again. Left-handed shot up. No good this time. Rebound to Booker. This is one of the leading rebounders in the squad. Top of the key. And that time they'll say Pites hooked her down low. They've had that. Top of the key, down to the one of the two blocks, oh, working for him a couple times Billy here. Quinn Take a look at it. There you see again, there you see Booker now, at the top, had Rashley the look. Wesley, Probably could have gone to Ashley a little bit sooner than that, but again, still a good look. Now let's see what they try to do here as they stack things up. This is kind of one of those out of bounds plays where you see players break out to different parts of the court. Now they'll just try to reset, now they go inside. Booker up and under, nowhere to go. Good defense there by the Boone Central product. Just a sophomore down there, Lehman. There's off glass, no. And it's Segel Key from out in Sydney, Nebraska, getting the rebound for Concordia. Under 12 minutes. First half, 17 to 8. 17 for jumper up and in. Lobota with another one. And that brings Coach Fett off the bench. Another timeout as the lead goes to double digits. We'll pause. 19 8. Nebraska Wesleyan trails it here in the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Dr. Ari Cycle here with a simple but important message Recycling starts at home. That's right. It's up to you to take the first step. Setting up a home recycling system is easy, and you don't need much space. Find out how at recycle.lincoln.ne.gov. Recycling is good for our community and our planet, and you don't need to be a genius like me to get started. So do the right thing, the recycle thing. Concordia has opened their lead up a little bit here, 19 to eight from Snyder Arena. A special thanks for that. Well, Nebraska let's Wesleyan reset here a little bit. Lincoln Nebraska Wesleyan, after their first timeout, was down 11 to six. Courtney Cook scores her last basket, and now an eight nothing run for Concordia. In part, mostly to what they've done defensively in that press. They forced a few turnovers. Wesleyan's been able to get down inside a couple of times with some looks underneath the basket, but they have not been able to finish. Forty has been able to feed off of that, and that's what's distanced themselves so far here. 11 point lead here, 11 minutes left here before halftime. Still plenty of time here to try to get back into the swing of things and try to cut down again on that deficit. But the one thing you got to be able to do is try to break that press, be efficient down on the other end of the court, and get good looks underneath the basket. And try to draw fouls. Yeah, that's right. I mean, get to the line, easy points, and. Concordia and their aggressive style defense, that's something you can do is get in the bonus against them. Speaking of that turnover, off the press again. Edwards with it. Still in that zone defense, Nebraska Wesley in the middle. Second key down low. Lehman looked like maybe it was clean up top, but they'll say a little too much body. 
That time from Bridget Buecher. When you run a zone defense, you have responsibilities. There are times that one player will be responsible for trying to cover two different players in the court. That time, Bridget Booker was in that situation. She did the best she could to protect the basket. Unfortunately, she got caught with a pass down low. Lehman at the line, just a 53% free throw shooter of the year. Missed the first, makes the second, so she stays true to form, and it's a 12-point Concordia cushion here. Again, they're on a 9-0 run here, Lucas, and still that pressure at midcourt. That's a 10-second count. That's a 10-second count again. That's the second one tonight. And the one thing Drew Olson's not going to do is call off the dogs in that press. That's for sure. That's, that's their style. That's their bread and butter. They're, they're going to get after it. They got a tough couple of tests coming up. Dakota Wesleyan, Morningside, Northwestern, all ranked teams. Trying to go high post. Lehman, good hands, was able to hang on to it. Skip it over the top. Thought about a three. Segel key. Edwards will take it. A high rainbow finds the pot of gold that time. Devin Edwards was a good three-point shooter in high school at Lincoln Northeast. And She's one of those players that Concordia will go to to try to shoot the outside shot. There's another turnover. Lehman poked it away. Lobota tracked it down. Single key in the corner. That extra pass. Lobota with another open jumper. No good that time. Rebound. Cook for Nebraska Wesley and comes away with it. They'll push the issue. Have some numbers. Off glass and in. And Good. That was a good break to Colsey with a good look up the floor. Found Sanchez. Sanchez had a wide open drive to the basket. Sanchez, one of three returning letter winners for Nebraska Wesleyan squad this year. Say a very young squad that Coach Fett took over. She came over from Lakeland College. That was an NCAA Division III, but she's no stranger to the GPAC. She played basketball at the University of Sioux Falls before they left the conference. So she knows the kind of grind it is. She knew what she was getting into here and rebuilding this Nebraska Wesleyan program. A deep three from Quinn. And it was a little short, maybe a little beyond her range, but uh, Mueller tracked down the rebound. Another free second chance opportunity. Pites to Mueller. Pites kind of got in a little jam there, had nowhere to go. And Mueller just happened to be cutting towards the hoop. You know, Wesleyan did the right thing. They collapsed down, but you got to have the outside help helping in too. Quinn steals away the pass, steps through, gets it to Heiser, Morris. Nice crossover, baseline kick out. Kelsey Heiser into the lane. Mueller wasn't ready for it, off her face that time. And Bailey Morris will reset with 15 on the shot clock. Before our last time out, Lucas, Nebraska Wesleyan already had seven turnovers. Quinn from the corner, off back iron, no good. And turnovers, as you said, they Average over 24 turnovers per game. Again, it's just, you know, inexperience. Much different level for some of these girls that are out here playing college level basketball now. Deep two point field goal, no good. Morris listed at 5 4, tracks down the rebound. Lost a spin move, but Heiser can track it down. Eight minutes here. Left in the first half. Pites another runner on the left side. That one's no good. She's had success finding the seam over there. That time a little too hard off glass. That pass. A little too much mustard sails out of bounds. Right idea. Had the right idea. Now for the rest, Wesley, a little bit too much of that Albert. toss down the floor. Also in 40, Albert comes back in. Booker comes back in. And you look at this Concordia record, 20 and 5 overall, 12 and 3 in the G Pack. And they just keep on winning. You wouldn't really realize they've had a bunch of injuries. That pass too high, but Morris able to track it down, then had it taken away. Morris was one of those that had an injury. See, she still has that brace on the knee. Booker in the corner. 19 to work with on the shot clock. Now they'll come back up out top and reset things. 12 to work with. Pull up three, up and in. Nice shot that time for the goal stick. She's not afraid to take the shot. She can knock him down. Gets him back within 12 here. So the lead had ballooned to 15. Quinn, good take in the lane, and then a nice find to find Mueller. 
her fellow freshman across the lane. And it's, it's those type of plays that will just kill you defensively. That was a good pass and the dribble penetration, the bounce pass in the lane. Becky Mueller with the finish. You can't really, there's an errant pass as the pressure again getting Nebraska Wesleyan fit, see whether it's in the back court or the front court. Quinn will key it in. Quinn. A familiar name of this Concordia program. It's her sister, Amber, played for the Bulldogs. Deep three in the corner, no good. Rebound that time to Ashley. Good block out by Kaylee or Kylie Ashley, the daughter of former Lincoln Northeast and Nebraska Wesleyan basketball standout Lonnie Ashley. Lonnie was a part of those NCAA third place teams in the mid-80s here at Nebraska Wesleyan. Quinn takes it in left side. Hoop and the harm for Shelby Quinn. Freshman from Bellevue East with a chance for a traditional three-point play. The bucket is good. Get the steal. It's a little too much there. Played for a good coach, Scott Jensen, up there at Bellevue East. That's a program that's really just produced a lot of great basketball players in the past 10 to 15 years. It has been a powerhouse, that's for sure. And By the way, the first foul on Alexis Albert. Free throws good for Quinn, who just a 58% free throw shooter on the season as she gets a breather. A few new faces in there for Concordia. Wissing checks back in, and for the first time, Kristen Conahan in the game. She blew her ACL or tore her ACL on January 8th. She's out there with a brace and playing for the first time since January. Kick out, shots up, no good. Rebound to Laboda. Not a bad look that time from Courtney Cook. Transition, Conahan. Conahan, one of the best in Concordia history, a senior. Miller, Nebraska product. They swing it to Conahan. Thought about a three, goes inside. Lobota, the senior, but she traveled with it. You know, great ball movement. That's just textbook. Yeah, you making the extra pass. I mean, they, they're not looking to get a shot. They're, they'll, they're willing to take the extra pass to look to get to someone that is actually open. And that's what makes it so hard to defend this Bulldog team. You don't, there's not really one person you can say we have to shut up, shut down because on any given night, it could be one of four to five different people who could have double digits on you. Bailey Morris happens to be one that gets there on a consistent basis. There's a pull-up jumper in the lane, rattles around, no good. Not a bad look though. Lehman ahead, Wissing. Skip it out, Edwards has one three already, trying to make it two, no good. And a good rebound though for Nebraska Wesleyan. Do a little damage in the glass here. They have a little bit of an opening. Pull up three, no good. Laboda had it, lost it. Edwards tracks it down. Skip it up top, Kristen Conahan. Inside, Laboda had a good seal on the left side. That is just a great post up from Lori Laboda. Laboda at 5'11", but earlier she's hit about three or four 15 to 18 foot jumpers. Lob it over the top. Deep baseline corner three is up. No good. Didn't get anything. Lehman tracks it down. Lost it. Still battling. In the lane is Cook off glass and in. And Courtney Cook. She has eight of the 15 for Nebraska West. Did such a great job that time. Went after the basketball. Didn't lose concentration. Took it back and went up for the basket inside. 2-3 zone still for Nebraska Wesley, and Edwards tries to dribble into it, loses it off her foot. Skip it to Conahan, thought about a three. Dribbles instead, pull up from 12. Off the front iron, no good. Not too bad for your first shot since January. Four and that minutes left, and you just blink, and it's 32-15, to 15, Jeff. Where do you, you don't realize how fast Concordia puts the points up. I mean, they're so quick in the transition game, the press. That's been the big difference is the press. Edwards, three left side. That one looks good, and it is. Devin Edwards has a couple triples. She has six on the night. And just like that, it's a 20-point lead. Now if you're Nebraska Wesleyan, do you go from the zone to a man defense? Another takeaway on the press. Conahan's all alone up ahead. Edwards kicks it out. Thought about a three. Instead, Taylor Wissing will size it up. That one's short off the iron. And that's it. Just because you're up 20 doesn't mean a three-pointer is a bad shot in Coach Olson's book. If you're open, you shoot. There's nice. a nice spin move in the lane. Sanchez has four. That's a nice spin move. Great attack that time from Wesley. You just need more stuff like that on offense. 
Lehman posting up hard on the left side. Had it poked away twice. Turnover Bulldogs. Well, you can tell. Good defense from Wesley in that time. And now Brittany Feck calls a timeout. And it's a full timeout. 35-17 Bulldogs on top of the Prairie Wolves in the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Your life is what you make of it. In Lincoln, some are making it fun. Some are making it successful. Others are making it vibrant, refreshing, economical, creative, interesting. They're making Lincoln home. So make it young. Make it a family. Make it a booming career. Make it whatever makes you happy. Make your life right in Lincoln. Thirty-five, seventeen, Concordia all over Nebraska. Wesleyan here from Snyder Arena. Lucas Warman alongside Jeff Motes. And aside from the game, the, the injuries that Concordia has had this year and Kristen Conahan in general, to see her out there is remarkable. They had Jerrica Pearson, who averaged double-double before she left almost, went down December 30th with an ACL. Against Middle in the eighth, Kristen Conahan goes down. Bailey Morris goes down in that game. And Conahan, ACL, Corn, gone, whatever you want to call it, is back tonight. She's 150 points shy of setting the all-time scoring mark at Concordia. She's got five regular season games left, and she's giving it a go. Well, and you, you begin to wonder how long she can go on that knee. That's not going to be an easy task. Normally with an ACL injury, you're out for an entire season. Exactly. But if you try to come back from that pretty soon, I mean, you, you run the risk of re-injury again. There you see the, the brace on Conahan as she sits down on the bench. They're going to try to keep her fresh as possible and give her frequent breaks in this game. Well, she's been, I talked to Coach Olson, there's a steal from Pites again. Down the left side, off the last, it doesn't go. She'll get two free throws. I talked to Coach Olson before the game, and he said, Is this, take a look, just strong with the ball going in there. She's been working out. She hasn't been practicing. She's been staying in shape, but... Hasn't been practicing, so the shot, those type of timing things, probably going to be a little off. But he felt as if they were maybe going to get her in the game, that tonight was as good an opportunity as any against a struggling Nebraska Wesleyan team. You get a little bit of a lead, as they have here, trying to go on top by Pites trying to make it 37-17, to 17 and she left it short. But it's a good place to work her back in, and we've seen it tonight. And Good for her. Another turnover on the press ahead. Morris, layup right side. And That's all night right there. That press, the way they got that set up, they looked to trap, and that's where they've been forcing most of their turnovers is that trap at midcourt. Then they drop back into the man-to-man -man in the block. Hooker, no good. Pites with another rebound. Pites out of Hardington, Nebraska, wants to push the issue. Going to take it all the way in. Off glass, count it, and the foul. That was close right there. Courtney Cook, or Felicia Tukolsky, rather, was Thanks. right inside that, right close to that arc underneath the basket. And she wasn't totally set. She tried to take the charge, but she's called for the blocking foul. Look at Pites and sizing things up as she came down the court. Kind of looked off that seam on the left side and right down she went. And she's been a wing player for Concordia. Been doing a little more post play since the injuries to Pearson along with Conahan. Three throws up and in. Three point play. Pites leading the Bulldogs here tonight so far. 13. Under two minutes first half. It's all Bulldogs. Wesleyan against that man-to-man -man pressure in the half court. There's a good kick out. Three from the quarter. Might have been partially blocked. Heiser tracks down the loose ball. Good look, though, from Booker that time. Pites kicks it into the lane. Segel key off glass. No. Too hard. But everyone fills the lane for Concordia. There's always an option, it seems like, even in the transition. They're going to try to shut you down any way you can. You Like you said, fill the lanes. Good off take. glass, left side. Cook in double digits. And I think she's going to be a player to watch I here think, in the next yes. couple of years. Courtney Cook is something else. She has kept her focus. Already picked up 10 points in this game for Wesleyan. How about that for defense? 
Good defense at time from Cook. Yeah. And you talk about Courtney Cook and one to watch. She averages about 12 and a half per contest on the season, but in the last four games, almost almost 19, 18.8 8 points. So she's picked her her game up here as of late, getting accustomed to the game. A freshman, there's a five second count with a turnover. But as you said early, so young, just no upperclassmen starting on this team. All freshmen and sophomores. A couple senior, one senior on the lineup, a handful of juniors. But good things from Courtney Cook tonight is there's a nice inbounds play. Senko Key left it hard again, and it was last touched by, they'll say, Diaz had a hand on it. You know, you look at, you got at least three starters out here for Wesleyan tonight that are freshmen. Concordia, you got one freshman in the lineup. Everybody else is either a junior or a senior. I mean, it, it's apples to oranges, yep. basically, when you look at everything in perspective. There's a three-pointer from Senko Keys. There is a freshman that's getting some time. Pites fights for it. She's a junior. Tie up. It'll go with Nebraska Wesleyan. And that's the type of defense that they need to do in the short court is help out, hedge down. If you're out of the perimeter playing in that zone defense, hedge down in the lane as quick as you can, still keep in contact with the person that you're guarding out there. They get after it. Segelke and Morris trying to get the trap in the corner. Now Nebraska Wesleyan with under a minute to play might have numbers. And there's a travel. Booker. Tried to go to the rack, but a little too much shimmy and shake before she put it on the floor. Just a simple mistake, that's all. Again, the right idea. 40 seconds first half, about 25 on the shot clock right now. A 12-second differential. Morris lost it on the way up. They'll say it went off of Morris's leg. Back to Nebraska Wesleyan. So 4.4 differential shot to game clock here. Just take a look, and it did. Just good hand there on the defense that time. Looked like that was Cook maybe again. Pites take away steal. the inbounds off the glass. No good. Heiser gets the offensive board. Morris spots for three left side. No. And we're going to have a whistle. Morris getting three, three free throws here as they didn't allow her to come down. She'll shoot three. Courtney Cook on the block at that time. They called for the foul. That's number two on her. They're going to say that she did get to the floor and then she got pushed. So it's just a one and one rather than three. Well, that's pretty close. I mean, it could, have been a, it could have been three shots that time. Morris gets the friendly Very roll. Good. Her fifth point of the night. 77% free throw shooter. Out of Sandy Creek High School. Second one's good as well. They've had some players come out of there as well. Another. Such a great program down there, traditionally. And another turnover in the press. It sounds like a broken record, but that's but, what I mean, they do. How else can you explain it, Lucas? Because Concordia's press is very, very tough. It's very solid. I mean, they look to trap. They'll double team anybody who's got the ball in the backcourt, try to force that turnover, get the easy basket. 12 here to work with. Morris has it in her hands. And they're going to go inside and say Pites was camped in there for a little too long. Three seconds. Now, how many times in this day and age do you see a three-second call? Not often. <laughs> you gotta be, you got to be setting up Not your tent often. and your campfire and getting the fixings out to Cook. Because six here as the first half winds down. Chance from the corner. Three is on the way. No good. And that's going to do it in the first half of action. 43-19. Concordia just goes on those runs and quietly opens up a big, big cushion here at Snyder Arena as we hit halftime. Don't forget we'll have the men's contest later coming up. Bulldogs and Prairie Wolves as well. As it's a full night of GPAC action. 43-19, it's all Bulldogs at the half. Hi, this is Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy. Did you know that proper insulation levels can help reduce your heating and cooling costs? You can check your attic insulation level with this very advanced high-tech tool called a ruler. Make sure you have 14 to 16 inches of insulation for maximum energy efficiency. It'll help reduce drafts and allow your heating and cooling systems to not have to work so hard. Think of it as saving money by the inches. You know, $1, $2, $3, you get the idea. For more ways to save, visit les.com today. See you next time. Dr. Ari Cycle here with a simple but important message. Recycling starts at home. That's right, it's up to you to take the first step. Setting up a home recycling system is easy and you don't need much space. 
Find out how at recycle.lincoln.ne.gov. Recycling is good for our community and our planet, and you don't need to be a genius like me to get started. So do the right thing, the recycle thing. Thank you for supporting Lincoln Cares. By voluntarily adding $1 each month to your Lincoln Electric System bill, you've helped improve parks programs and facilities across the city. Now your dollar goes even further. Lincoln Cares has been expanded to support not just parks, but also libraries and programs for older adults. And your donations are matched by community partners. See how much more $1 can do. Visit LincolnCares.org. Today, you could save a life. We know that when emergency vehicles are approaching, it can be alarming, and remembering what to do may escape you. Whenever you see and hear lights and sirens of an emergency vehicle, move to the right of the road and stop. Wait for all emergency vehicles to pass. It may be one of your family or friends we're going to assist. Please help us to arrive quickly and safely, and remember, today, you could save a life. The Lincoln Water System knows you are busy and we appreciate your help as we replace your indoor water meters. First look for a door hanger with your appointment time. Make sure an adult will be present. Allow easy access to the meter and make sure the technician is wearing a Lincoln Water System uniform and carrying ID. The free replacement takes only about 20 minutes. For more information call 402-441-1500 or visit water.lincoln.ne.gov. Your life is what you make of it. In Lincoln, some are making it fun. Some are making it successful. Others are making it vibrant, refreshing, economical, creative, interesting. They're making Lincoln home. So make it young. Make it a family. Make it a booming career. Make it whatever makes you happy. Make your life right in Lincoln. We're courtside here at Snyder Arena talking with Nebraska Wesleyan men's and women's track and field coach Ted Bulling. Coach Bulling is in the 29th season as the head coach for the men, 27th year for the women, and Coach Bulling joins us here at courtside. Thank you so much for joining us here. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's uh, it's nice to be here. Just got out of practice, so pardon <laughs> my uh, non-formal attire, but uh, glad to be here. Well, it sounds like the 2014 is off to a great start for you guys. Let's talk about some of the top performers and how everything's been going for your team. Sure. We're really, uh, really pleased with how the season's gone so far. Um, on the women's side, we've got three or four girls that are nationally ranked in the top 15 or 20 so far. Ashton Steckelberg is a Lincoln Northeast graduate in the uh, hurdles. Uh, Gabby Jenkins is a sophomore distance runner from Omaha who's doing uh, very, very well. And uh, Katie Crick is a freshman from right here in Lincoln, Lincoln Pius, that's doing very well in the 200 and 400. And on the guys' side, we're uh, uh, led by senior Tommy Bardsley uh, from uh, Beatrice, Nebraska. Tommy's the older brother of Trey, uh, you know, from the basketball team. Trey's a sophomore. And uh, Tommy's off to a great start, like I said. He's already made uh, 6'11 in his very first meet last weekend. Uh, before Christmas, we have a little inter-squad meet to kind of wrap things up in the fall, and he made seven foot at yeah. the, at the inter-squad meet. So, so Tommy's doing great. We've got another great freshman from Lincoln Pius, uh, Garrett Teal. Uh, he was the all-class uh, gold medal winner last year in the state of Nebraska in the 400. So he's doing very well. So yeah, we're off to a great start. And with Bardsley getting GPAC honors too? Yep, that's right. He was uh, honored as a GPAC Athlete of the Week this week for uh, making his 6'11". And uh, like I said, that was a, his very first meet. We kind of held him out. You know, we weren't worried about him qualifying for nationals or anything. We knew that was a given. So we just kind of rested in the first couple weeks. And, and uh, I think he can go 7-1, 7-2. I really do. Well, let's see if that happens. Now, another big event that's coming up here next month where we're going to see not only great competition from around here, but also national competition is the 2014 NCAA Division III Indoor Track and Field Championships coming to the Devaney Center. Talk about that. How did that come about, and how did Nebraska Wesleyan get involved? Yeah, it's uh, it's been kind of a long process. It's something that our athletic director, uh, Dr. Ira Zeff, has wanted to do for many years. And to be honest with you, it took him a while to talk me into it because I know how much work <laughs> it is. But uh, um, we finally decided, let's do it. We went through a bid process that was quite lengthy. Uh, you know, it's about a lot more than just the track meet. It's about hotels and banquet room space and infrastructure and. Anyway, we were awarded the uh, 
the uh, bid for 2014, and we're really excited about it. When we look at this championship event coming, how many athletes are going to be competing, and, and what other details can you tell us about yeah, this? It's, um, it's, it's, it'll, it'll, it'll be about 650 athletes. So while that's a, a lot of athletes, that, you know, that's men and women, it's not, you know, we've had bigger meets in town before, but it's very elite. It's, it's really, really difficult to qualify for. That covers about 100 schools will probably qualify athletes of the 450 Division III schools that are out there. So um, it's tough. Um, March 14th and 15th um, is the competition. Schools from all over the country, you know, NCAA Division III schools, great athletes. Um, you know, just uh, kind of thinking about this today, uh, a lot of people may not realize, um, for instance, Edward Moses, you know, one of the most oh, yes. well-known track athletes of all time, was a Division III athlete in track. The current um, World uh, Championship silver medalist, Nick Simmons, ran in NCAA Division III. So some great athletes uh, from all across the country and, of course, from, from some great academic schools as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it sounds like everything's going along just fine for you here in 2014. Coach Bulling, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck with the rest of your track season and even for the NCAA three, D Division Three Championships next month All here right. in Lincoln. I appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you. All right, that's head coach Ted Bowling of the Nebraska Wesleyan men's and women's track and field team. Back to Snyder Arena in just a moment on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network.